KCR's fulminations continue. Telangana Chief Minister Kalvakuntla Chandrasekhar Rao continues to till the windmills and come up with outlandish theories. His party bigwigs defend him as an expert on the constitution and a very knowledgeable man on a range of issues. KCR soon springs a surprise on anyone who is willing to listen by attributing cloud bursts to a conspiracy by foreign powers. He pops himself up and acts as if he is a major player on the national political stage. But political analysts wonder whether TRS can win a single assembly seat outside Telangana for him to substantiate any such claims. As a regional leader constantly punching above his weight, KCR has only undermined his own relevance. Other political leaders know he can hold on to his state with some effort. KCR's political influence and relevance end where Telangana's boundaries do. Telangana is no longer the TRS citadel it was in 2019. And KCR is not entirely aware of this fact. However, his political moves are getting increasingly bizarre and they reflect his frustration and desperation. Take for example his backing of the presidential nominee of opposition parties and a sure shot loser Yashwan Sinha. His criticism of Modi for everything that he sees is wrong with the way the Indian economy runs to what the World Bank and IMF have to say about its robust nature. Compare KCR's analysis of the Indian economy with what these agencies have to say about the two economic giants, the United States of America and China. India's GDP rate is expected to grow around 7.5 to 8 percent as against the US and China's below 5 percent. The entire international community also complimented India under Modi's leadership for handling the two-year pandemic situation very well. Besides not only producing a couple of vaccines and helping the rest of the world, but also vaccinating a major portion of its 140 crore population. Against that backdrop, KCR's jibe only exposes his ignorance with respect to the economy. This is what a widely respected political observer and former army officer Brigadier G.B. Reddy has to say. On India's economic growth, one should be happy and contented with the projections given by the World Bank and IMF. 7.5 to 8 percent growth rate is excellent considering the post-COVID scenario. In fact, China today under Jinping, its growth rate has predicted to be only 2.5 to 3 percent. So any criticism on account of economic growth not reaching the double figure is unwarranted in India. Be that as it may, economic growth as per the latest view of P. Chidambaram, former finance minister, which I had been highlighting since the last 10 or 15 years, is 5% can be taken as a normal economic growth due to 3% contribution by agriculture and about 2% by the services sector. Today, if you add the information technology projections, it can be even considered as services sector contribution to 6 to 7 percent. So, hypercriticism by people, particularly responsible political leaders, that the economy of India is suffering is unwarranted. In fact, the inflation rate of India, which remains still below 8 percent, is much better than many of the Western capitalist countries. So, there is no need for a gloomy picture projection of Indian economy. In fact, each state, if you take into consideration, has varying rates of inflation. In Telangana, it is projected at 10% inflation, 
whereas in Kerala it is only projected 5% inflation. A detailed research can easily prove the reasons for higher inflation. In fact, one can attribute it to the higher fuel prices in Telangana. So, a large number of factors must be considered while commenting on the economy and its growth rates. KCR's policies have led Telangana to a state of near bankruptcy. His short-sighted policy of distributing freebies is only worsening the situation. BJP leaders have been quick to point out that KCR is going all out to appease minority Muslims in a bid to latch onto the word bank. As a political entity, TRS has lost its sheen. He has emptied the state's exchequer for freebies with Dalit Bandhu, proving to be the costliest of them all. To what extent they will come to his rescue in the upcoming assembly polls remains debatable. This is MS Purthi for Orange News 9 TV.